Hey guys, this is Lockie, and today is the beginning of a tutorial series I'm going to be doing on how to make games for the HTC Vive with Unity. I'm going to be assuming that you have a basic knowledge of Unity and C Sharp in this tutorial series to not waste any time and get right into what needs to be taught. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is install the Steam VR plugin. To do this, open up the Asset Store tab. In the search bar, type in Steam VR, make sure there is no space. Click on it and import it or download it if you haven't already installed it somewhere else. Um, I already have installed it so I don't need to worry about that. But from then, what you need to do is delete the main camera in the scene, add a plane just because it gives you a sense of the ground, center it so you don't need to worry about doing that later. Then in the Steam VR folder, Go to SteamVR, Prefabs, and Camera Rig. Drag this into the scene, center it out also, and then you have a functioning VR setup. Now I'm going to explain to you what the Camera Rig is. The Camera Rig is basically your room. Imagine when you move this around, it moves everything inside of it around. That includes you and your controllers. Controller left and right are your left and right controllers. That makes sense. And your camera head is your head. It has a camera built in, a tracked object, and both your controllers have tracked objects built in. You don't really need to worry about anything else at the moment. So next we're going to create a few scripts. Press create folder, call it scripts. Open it up, and then create a new script and call it controller. This script isn't totally necessary, but I find it useful later on. What you can do is go to public uh, steam vr controller dot device controller get return steam vr controller dot input get component steam vr Tracked object dot index, I think. Yep. Um, you also need to convert that to an int by writing int in brackets. Um, what this does is it retrieves the actual controller information, so you don't need to type this out every single time. Um, what you need to do now is add this to your left and right controllers. Next, what we're going to do is create another script. Go create C sharp script and held object. This is basically a component that you add to everything that you want to be holdable. In held object, clear up all of that, fix the indentation, and go public controller parent. This basically just tells it which object is it is being held by. Wait for that to load. And now what I'll do is I'll create another script. I'll call this one hand. In hand, we need a couple variables, a game object, which is the held object, and a controller, which is the controller. The controller is going to be equal to the controller component that is on this object. And just to make sure that you do have a control object, you can add the require component tag to make sure that it's added automatically every time you add the hand component. Now we have that, so we can continue. What we're going to do is we're going to check if there is a held object already. If there isn't a held object, we're going to check if the controller uh, is having the trigger pressed. The naming system for the buttons isn't the most convenient, but it does work. Okay, so that checks if the trigger button has been pressed. Basically, with the same as a mouse down. So yeah, check if it gets pressed, and then uh, we're going to create an array of colliders 
of all of the things that are in a small radius of the controller. Okay, so that gets all the objects within a 0.1 radius of your controller. Next thing we're going to do is going to run through each of those colliders. To check if they are ready to be a held object. We're going to check if there is no held object, because it's looping through each one, and say it finds one already, it might accidentally add another one and replace it. So if held object equals equals null and call dot get component held object that just checks that it is a held object also call dot get component held object dot parent equals equals null that just checks sure that that well, that just makes sure that it's not being held by anything else uh, that makes sure that this current one is ready to be a collider. Now what we need to do is set it to the collider, or to the held object. Held object equals call.gameObject. Held object dot transform dot parent equals transform. That just sets it to the controller so it follows it around. Held object dot transform dot local position equals vector three dot zero local rotation equals vector three dot zero as well. Actually no. Um quaternion dot identity as it is a quaternion. And that'll make it so that whenever you pick something up it just carries it around. Next what you need to do is just copy this uh trigger thing, add that there, make sure that you do have all of your brackets done. But instead of um getting press, um, make sure that you're releasing. Also, I forgot to add down, that would have activated every time you held the button down instead of pressing it. So this checks whenever you press it for the first time, and this presses, uh, checks it whenever you release it. Um, here what you need to do is make it so that held object equals null, held object dot parent, or transform dot parent actually. And also, um, you'll notice how if you try to pick it up currently with this script, um, it'll fall with gravity. So I'll just do held object dot get component rigid body dot is kinematic equals true, and then I'll disable that in this other part. So that'll work at the moment. But you also need to make sure that you set the parent of the held object. So held object dot get component held object dot parent equals controller. And then here we'll make sure that it does not equal anything so it can be picked up again. I think that's everything at the moment. So save that and give it a go. Okay, so now we need to add something to pick up. Go to game object, 3D object, and cube, or any other object you'd like to create. Center it out to zero. Change the, sa uh, the scale to something lower like 0.1 so you can actually pick it up and have it reasonably sized. Add a held object component. Also add a rigid body component. And then I would also suggest in held object hiding this, as well as giving it a require component type of rigid body tag so that it automatically adds the rigid body. Okay now, give this a run and see how it works. Also, I've got to add the hand component to both the controllers, so I'll suggest doing that now. If you have been following me up to this point, you will notice that you can pick up objects and let them go. 
I have accidentally done a typo, and that is instead of removing the is kinematic, in, is kinematic component of the rigid body, it, I um, accidentally re-enabled it. So change that to false, and it will fall to the ground. But you'll also notice that it also doesn't like fly forward and get thrown like you'd expect it to. I've come up with a solution for this, and that is to do something called a rigid body simulator. The simulator will be a new object. And we'll add it a rigid body component, which only makes sense. Next, I'm just going to change its name to simulator. And change its parent, the parent of the controller. Now that's initialized, let's actually use it. In this component, all you need to do is go simulator dot velocity equals transform dot position minus simulator dot position times fifty f. The 50 is just a number that I've come across that actually works well. Uh, some numbers work better than others. Uh, you can experiment with that if you'd like to. And next what you can do is when the held object becomes no longer kinematic, you can go held object dot get component rigid body dot velocity equals simulator dot velocity. What this does is it creates a rigid body that follows your hand through using the velocity and then when you release the held object it'll give it the velocity that that um, simulator had. So basically what this does is it allows you to throw the object. So give this a test and see how it works as well. This is the end result. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. In this tutorial, we have learnt the composition of the camera rig and how to handle objects. Uh, it's fairly basic. Um, you can change it around and experiment with a lot of things if you'd like to. And just remember, um, in a few days, most likely, I will have an asset on the asset store called uh, VR Inventory System. It hasn't been approved yet, so there's no way of knowing for certain, but you can get that from the asset store if you'd like, uh, soon enough, and that'll help you with a lot of these things. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you know whenever I upload. See you next week!